Hi and welcome to this video on why music scenes are suffering today. Subtitles break out of the doom loop and give the finger to the status quo. My name is Mike and I'm from the Indie Band Alliance and let's get right to it. Except it's not working. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So what is a music scene? While well, a music scene consists of the bands, concert goers, venues, retailers, and recording studios in a given city. Good bands plus good venues plus paying crowd equals a good music scene. A good gauge of a scene is how often you can find live music, how diverse the music is, and how good the music is. Signs of a lame scene. Few, if any, profitable venues catering to live music. Few bands worth mentioning in any genre. Jaded audiences unwilling to pay cover charges, and no worthwhile local college radio shows are good signs of a bad scene. Also, no open mic nights. So once upon a time, music scenes thrived. Venues could just advertise live rock band and people lined up around the block. Rock music was brand new and exciting. People partied on the weekends, imagine that. Technology was primitive and musicians were paid $100 a performer. Today there's lots of competition. You've got video games, internet, high definition TV, satellite TV, DVDs, PVRs, movies, and surround sound. People today seem to have less disposable income. There's less time. We work longer hours. We work shift work, weekends, holidays. There's more restrictions. People can't smoke in bars. There's drinking and driving. Awareness, so less people uh, going out to party at the bars. And you know what? Live music just isn't new anymore. Oh, and there's uh, musicians are still getting paid $100 a performer decades later. So let's not make excuses for why the scene is so lame these days. The presentation of live music hasn't kept pace with technology. A lot of Bands are performing today with subpar sound, they're no-name artists, they're not really promoting themselves. Uh, they're overpriced and give low value to the audience. They put on a lame performance. So where do we go wrong? Well, I personally feel there's often too much competition between bands. Uh, learning the ropes as a musician is often a guessing game, and a lot of people come up uh, th feeling that they're supposed to take the audience for granted. A lot of bands play music for the wrong reasons, which kind of ends up, you know, they they join a band to get a girlfriend or to, to feel popular, and therefore they're in a band more to stroke their own ego than they are to uh, provide value to the bars or the clients of the bar. A lot of bands are lazy. They don't want to promote themselves, put up posters. They're unconscious, and I, I don't mean, you know, being asleep, but I mean... They don't have a plan, they don't have a, a system, they don't have a method to uh, to get where they want to go. Uh, the significance of the music scene. Why is the music scene so important? Well, I liken a music scene to comparing, if you compared a band or a musician to the scene, it's sort of like comparing a thumb to an arm. The strongest thumb in the world is useless if the arm it's attached to has gangrene. So it's like saying, you know, the best band in the world is useless if they're in a dead scene. So here's a strong thumb example, a good band being a strong thumb. Say a good band has 150 at every show, but they're going to face audience attrition due to time between releases or shows, trends, if your music isn't hip or cool anymore, age, fans outgrow your music. And other commitments, you know, people get married and have kids. So how do you replace lost fans? You play more shows. Uh, you can do more online or offline promotion, you know, including TV, radio, and magazine interviews, a.k.a. more work. So if one strong thumb is good, three strong thumbs are even better. So, you know, in this case, three strong bands. The perfect scenario is to perform with other strong thumbs. Um, if your band brings out 150 per show and thumb number two brings out, or band number two brings 100 per show and number three brings 75 per show, here you got 325 potential fans to play in front of instead of your 150.
that's 175 potential new fans for the same amount of work. Is this realistic? Uh, it's not if you're in a bad scene. It's not if bands refuse to think outside the box. It's not if bands refuse to work together. And it's not if uh, bands refuse to respect each other. If you're the big fish in the scene, you'll need other big fish to benefit from this theory. So, you know, if you can bring 100 people out to a show and every other band only brings 10, you know, to get a lot more people out to a show, you need to find another uh, band that can bring out more people. So what's the status quo? Well, there's a lot of bands out there. They're self-focused. They don't uh, help out other bands. There's just too much competition. Uh, they take instead of give. And when you put all this together, it creates what I call the doom loop and ultimately a, a dead or a lame scene. Here are some of the scene killers. Okay, so me first mentality. Uh, bands with a me first mentality, they don't promote other bands. They don't pay other bands. Uh, they leave early. And um, yeah, so check that out three times. So just to recap, playing in a good scene is good. Concert goers are more plentiful and appreciative in a good scene. There's more money to be made for bands, venues, retailers, studios, etc. And bands that work together achieve greater results with less effort. The stronger your scene is, the better your odds of making a career out of music can be. So with this big picture in mind, shouldn't we all be doing the best that we can to build the scene where we live? Stay tuned for part two where I'll discuss how to help build or strengthen the scene in your town. Thanks for watching.